Today is all about Docker image size and security. Hello, you're on Pablo Spot, I'm George. Nowadays, Docker containers are becoming ubiquitous in the world of application development. Regardless of whether you're building open source or enterprise grade systems, I will bet with my neighbor's cat that there is at least 90% chance that these applications are set up using containers. This containerization approach of software development is a massive game changer. And in the tech world, people never settle or do not feel satisfied with what's going on. There is always that motivation to find better ways of doing things. For example, it would take relatively longer time for containers to be instantiated if it's using a Docker image with a larger size. And so software engineers are always finding ways to make Docker images as minimal in size as possible. And more importantly, like any aspect of life, there's the dark side that needs to be managed. Libraries and binaries that are packaged into Docker images are either created with ill intentions or discovered to be vulnerable, which makes a system an easy target for attack. What this means is that libraries and binaries are packaged into application or distro dependencies that will eventually make a system easy to hack. If you come to think of it, Docker image size and Docker image vulnerability are somehow congruent. The larger the Docker image size is, the higher the chances are of having vulnerable components inside your Docker image. This is because the size of your Docker image determines the surface area of attack. I think that is more than enough context for what we will do today. On this episode, we will revisit the Docker configuration that I've set up for my backend component on my event-driven architecture series. I will try my best to make this episode as standalone as possible, but if you're interested, check out the related series in the description below. So let's start coding. So this is the source code behind the repository that I've set up for the event-driven architecture series and good habit should never go away. So let's make sure I have all the latest code pulled into my local session. So let me run git pull. So my code is already up to date. What we will do today is look into a better way of building my backend Docker image using chain guard images. We will see if we can bring down the size of my original Docker image and minimize or better yet, bring the image vulnerabilities to zero. So let's go ahead and open my backend Docker configuration file, which I already have opened here. So let's just quickly scroll all the way to the top of this file. My application is written in Python, which would explain why I use the Python base image. I also use an Alpine image since this is the one of the popular and smaller available distro. What you will also notice is that this Docker configuration involves several stages. And at the end of this file is the final stage inheriting from the base stage. We need to be able to compare apples to apples later. And so I need to make a few adjustments to my Docker configuration for this to be possible. So if I scroll all the way to the top, What I need to do initially is to use a later version of Python. So I will update my base image to use Python 3.12. The next set of changes involve my backend requirements.txt file. So let's go ahead and open that file. As you can see in this file, the salary module is pinned to a version that is three years old. And so for simplicity, what I will do is remove the pinning of version for salary. And so now every module dependency is set to use the latest version. And now let me switch to my VS Code terminal and go ahead and build the Docker images.
I am going to use the string original to tag my Docker image so it's easily identifiable. Oh, oops, we have an error. Let me scroll up and check what this error is all about. It looks like it's complaining about a missing Python module called HTTPX. So what we need to do to fix this is go back to the code. And on my backend requirements.txt file, all the way to the end of the file, add the missing Python module. Now let me head back to my VS Code terminal and rerun the build. We have another error, so let's have a look at what the console says. So the error complains about a get command that is in my test endpoints at py on line 52, which is what you have right here. So what we will do to fix this is go back to my code and then open the affected file, which is in test, test endpoints at py. And then if we head to line 52, we may now be using an updated version of a module. So let's get rid of the extra JSON parameter that the error is complaining about. And if we scroll a little bit further down, we also have line 59 to fix. So let's get rid of the JSON parameter as well and save my changes. Now let's head back to my VS Code terminal Third time lucky, let's rerun Docker build. We finally have a successful Docker build. Now let's have a look at the image vulnerabilities by running Docker Scout Quick View. The Docker scan is complete. So let me scroll up a little bit in here so we can see the result. The lines I'm interested in here are the number of index packages and the vulnerability finding section on the console output. So for my Docker image, for my backend component, it contains 276 packages. The vulnerability section shows the hierarchy of base image inheritance and this console output shows that my Docker image has one package with high vulnerability and it inherits from base images that also have high vulnerability findings. The amount of risk that you can absorb relies on what you define as your threshold, but generally having critical and high vulnerability findings are very bad indicators of Docker image risk. And to quickly check the size of the image, Let's run Docker images. So my Docker image is 642 megabytes in size. Now let's run the application. Now let's switch to my browser and access the application. And the application works. And now for the fun part, let's refactor my backend Docker configuration file to use chain guard images. But before we make any changes, 
let's familiarize ourselves with ChainGuard. So let's head to the ChainGuard image page where the ChainGuard images are made available. This page is like your usual Docker Hub where you check for all available images for use, except this one is served by ChainGuard. If you are interested to learn other areas of ChainGuard or the service capability in general, head to their main website. They have good materials available for you to access and get familiar with their service offering. But I will make this episode as specific as possible and leave the extra reading at your own time and convenience. So on this page, I'm interested to see if they have Python image available and how it is used. So let's go search for Python. There's a few items in here that we need to digest before we go any further. On this image overview page, this section here provides the step to pull the image. And what you will notice is that ChainGuard has its own image repository. And if we scroll down the page and look at the versions tab, although they have multiple tags available, what you will notice is that all the other tags, apart from latest and latest dev, have the contact us in the pull URL annotation, which means only the latest and latest dev tags are readily available for use. Let's dig further on these two image tags and check what version of Python is packaged into the images. So let me go ahead and click the latest link. If we scroll down this packages tab, you will see that this image is packaged with Python 3.12. And this is why I updated the Python version on my original settings so we can properly compare the Docker images that are generated with the typical Docker Hub base image against ChainGuard base image. This page, if we go back all the way to the top, also has Vulnerabilities tab. And if we navigate to that tab, there are no vulnerabilities, which is always a good indication of a safe to use Docker image. Now let me go back to the main page. And this time, let's have a look at latest dash dev. And then let's scroll down this packages tab. And you will see that this image tag is also packaged with Python 3.12. And then if you go back to the top, click on vulnerabilities tab, that's also empty. What you will also notice is if you go back to the packages tab, there are more lines in this tab, which means this image tag has more packages in it compared to the latest tag. Now let's go back to the main page. This time, I'm going to go and open the Overview tab. And if I scroll down this Variants section on this page, it says the latest dash dev image variant has pip and shell, which would explain the longer list of packages we saw earlier. This also implies that pip installation and shell execution packages are not available in the latest variant. This would explain why, if I scroll down in this usage section, their Docker configuration is set to use two stages, a stage that uses the latest dash dev variant and installs all the Python module dependencies, and a final stage that uses the latest variant, which copies the installed Python module dependencies from the previous stage. So that's the bare minimum information that we need to know about these images. So let's switch back to my VS Code terminal.
And what we will do is we are going to pull both latest dash dev and latest Python images from ChainGuard. So both Docker images are now available on my local session. We just learned that the latest dash dev tag has more packages than the latest image. So let's verify if that is the case by running Docker scout view on both images. So the latest dash dev tag has 63 packages and has zero vulnerabilities. Sometimes Docker images have vulnerability findings within the image itself. And the result of the scan does not display any vulnerabilities on the base images that the Docker image inherits from. When it comes to fixing vulnerability findings on the image itself, it becomes a matter of finding which package is affected and making the necessary changes to resolve the vulnerability. This can be a package upgrade to the latest version or changing to a different package that does not have the vulnerability. Now let's run that quick view command against the latest tag. The latest image tag has 31 packages, which is about half of what's in latest dash dev. And also it has zero vulnerabilities, which is always a good sign. We also learned earlier that the latest dash dev images contains pip and shell packages, while the latest image does not. So let's verify that. If I attempt to access the interactive shell prompt of the latest dash dev image, And then I am going to install, say, a Python module called HTTPX. Everything works perfectly. So let's exit this session. Now, if I try to do the same thing for the latest image, I get an OCI error and that doesn't seem to work. I think this is one of many advantages of using ChainGuard latest images. One of many common ways of hacking into a Docker image is injecting scripts that can be executed using shell. Disabling the shell related packages on the image ensures that the image will not be compromised by maliciously injected and executed shell scripts. But then you start to wonder, if we cannot access shell on the latest image, how can we then be able to install Python dependencies? And I think this is the main motivation for using multi-stage Docker configuration file as documented in ChainGuard's website. And this is how I would interpret the framework. The latest dash dev image is used as baseline image to install everything you need which is mainly your Python module dependencies. And when you're ready to ship to production, all the necessary Python module installations are copied from the baseline stage into the final stage, which uses the latest tag. It's literally like using latest dash dev tag for development and the latest tag for production. And now that we know what we need to know, let's start refactoring my backend Docker configuration file. I'll start with changing the base image that I use for my base stage. I will replace 
this with the chain guard latest dev image tag these environment variables are used specifically for making the python module installation to work on alpine so i can get rid of all of these on line 7 are alpine specific package installations and these are no longer required so i also need to get rid of all of these But that previous line contains my pip install, so I need to reinstate that command. The dash dash user at the end is a pip switch to indicate that the target location of the Python module installation will be the home directory of the Docker image user, which in this case will be the non root user. This is necessary to make sure it will be easier to copy the Python module location from one stage to another, and we will see how this works later. And for the next set of changes, let me scroll all the way down to my final stage. This is pretty much my production stage, so I will use ChainGuard's latest image as the base image. I also need to add a few lines on this stage to make it work. First, I will set a work there directive and set it to user source. Then I will add a copy directive to copy the user source directory from the base stage. And then I need to copy the Python module installation directory from the base image. And so I will add this line. This is the directory where the Python module dependencies will be installed when pip install is run on the base stage. Remember that the latest image does not have shell installed in it. So if I scroll all the way down, the execution of the entry point shell script will no longer work. So firstly, line 40 is no longer necessary. So let me get rid of that. And what I need to do is update the entry point to explicitly declare the command that I need to run to start the application. So let's go ahead and open the entry point shell script for my backend component. What I need to do is copy this entire contents of the shell script head back to my docker config file and set the command explicitly inside the entry point directive like so. There is another change that I need to add in my Docker config file, but let me switch to my VS Code terminal to explain what we're trying to fix. If I get into the shell session of the ChainGuard latest dev image, like what we did previously, and let's say I pip install a module called PyTest,
Notice the warning message at the end of the installation. If I go ahead and check where PyTest is installed by running which PyTest, nothing is returned. This is because the Python module installation path is not in the execution path environment variable. So what I need to do is update the path environment variable and append the installation location. Now, if I rerun which PyTest, it now points to the right binary location. So let me quit this session and then go back to my code. So what I need to do is head to my base stage and add the env directive to set the path value. I also need the same environment variable set on my final stage. So let me copy that. And then head to my final stage. And plug that in. And because I'm running a web container, I also need to add another environment variable for flexibility. And this is the UV corn port. The default UV corn port is using port 8000, and this directive will allow flexibility on using a different port when running the application, which we will see later on. Now let's go ahead and build the new Docker image. I'm going to change the tag to chain guard to distinguish the images. Now that the build is completed successfully, let's run Docker Scout Quick View. My new backend Docker image, which uses ChainGuard as base image, has 84 packages and zero vulnerabilities. Now let's go ahead and check the image size. So the size has been stripped down by more than half of the original size, which is fantastic. Now let's see if the application starts. I am going to start this application on port 9090, so I am going to pass the UVCorn port environment variable. Now let's switch to my browser and access the application. So let's try to access the application on port 9090. And that still works. That's it. We get to learn how to use ChainGuard Docker images to build a trimmed down version of a Python Docker image with zero vulnerabilities. That's all I have for today, so I hope you learned something. Until next time, keep learning and stay safe. See ya.